Hi everyone, welcome to Steering Mariners and part three of the series of videos I have been making on explaining the terms that are used in ship stability calculations. Now I'm aware that you may be familiar with most of these terms, but I was getting a lot of questions from students world over regarding the meaning of some of the terms I use in advanced ship stability calculations. So I thought it would be a good idea for me to explain these terms to you in the video so that it lays a foundation for you for not only basic but also advanced ship stability problems. So let's get started with today's terms. So in today's video, I'm going to start with explaining what are tender ships. Now, before I do that, let me just remind you that when weight is added to the vessel, the center of gravity of the vessel always moves in the direction of the added weight. Now what you see on your screen here, you can see that the weight has been added on the deck here and the center of gravity denoted by the letter G is moving upwards and that is why you have, a, you have an upwards indicating arrow next to it. The horizontal line WL of course stands for water line. The letter B stands for center of buoyancy the letter M stands for meta center and right at the bottom of the vessel you have the letter K which stands for the vessel's keel. Now in this case you saw that as soon as we added the weight the deck or the center of gravity shifted upwards in the direction of the weight. Now weight adding at deck level results in the vessel's center of gravity rising but also causes a decrease in the vessel's metacentric height. The metacentric height is the vertical distance gm which pretty much determines the stability of the vessel now a vessel with little or no metacentric height that is reduced gm is said to be a tender ship in comparison to a tender ship we have stiff ships now in stiff ships when weight is added low down in the vessel it lowers the center of gravity and consequently causes an increase in the vessel's metacentric height denoted by gm you can see this on your screen that weight has been added in the lower part of the vessel and the center of gravity the letter g is going towards the added weight and that is why you have a downwards indicating arrow next to it now such vessels with a large metacentric height is said to be a stiff ship now a stiff ship tends to be comparatively difficult to heal and will roll from side to side very quickly but also perhaps violently. Now, if this condition is thought to be a problem, it can be corrected by raising the vessel's center of gravity. A tender ship on the other hand which you saw on the previous slide will be much easier to incline and it will not tend to return quickly to the upright position. And the reason is a reduced GM which gives it a reduced writing lever, something that we discussed in part two of the video. Now for tender ships, the time period taken to roll from side to side will be comparatively long. And this condition is not desirable and should be corrected by lowering the center of gravity. So ideally you should not have too large a metacentric height or very reduced metacentric height. You should have the adequate metacentric height for the type of vessel that you are sailing on. We don't go on to explain angle of lol and the term lol itself describes the state of a ship which is unstable when in an upright position and therefore floats at an angle of heel to one side or the other. Now if disturbed by some external forces such as strong winds or waves, the vessel will lurch to the same angle of lol on the opposite side angle of lol is quite different from list. This is caused by different circumstances and require much different countermeasures to correct it. And it is therefore most important that the seafarer or the mariner should be able to distinguish between angle of lol as well as the list. The center of gravity of a suspended weight can be considered to be at the point of suspension and therefore a heavy derrick which is being lifted clear of the jt has the same effect on the vessel's center of gravity as if the weight were actually on the head of the derrick or the crane 
that also exerts a healing force upon the vessel. Anyhow, we talk about the free surface effect now. And what is free surface effect? When a vessel with full tanks is healed, the liquid within the tank acts like a solid mass. And its center of gravity being the center of its volume remains constant and therefore does not cause any change in the vessel's metacentric height given by the vertical distance gm. However, when a vessel with a half-filled tank is healed, the liquid will seek to remain parallel with the water line. The center of gravity of the liquid being the center of its volume will move with the liquid and it can have a considerable effect upon the vessel's metacentric height. Half-filled tanks have the greatest adverse effect upon a healed vessel's metacentric height. The division of the tank into two equal parts by the use of a watertight baffle will reduce the adverse effect on the vessel's metacentric height to a quarter of that of an undivided tank. So you can see here how the tank has been divided into two and this division actually reduces the adverse effect of the free surface or the free surface of the free flowing liquid. It breaks that movement of the free flowing liquid and thus reduces the free surface effect. You must observe care, especially it should be taken when you are trying to correct a list by the filling of tanks. Now having two half filled tanks will create additional free surface effect. Therefore, in this situation, it is recommended that the tank on the lower side be filled before commencing to fill the tank on the higher side. Why is that? Because when you fill a tank on the lower side, weight is getting added on the lower side. That would mean that the center of gravity of the vessel will move towards the lower side and thus it will increase the metacentric height of the vessel, increase the GM and as a result also give it a good writing lever for the vessel to come back to the upright condition. We talk about stability curves now. Now the operation of a vessel varies considerably depending on the trading of the vessel. So I cannot explain stability curves for any particular type of vessel. This is more generalized. Now a trading vessel is uh, usually loaded in port whereas there are fishing vessels which you know take on the largest part of its load at sea. So there are all these different vessels. Now the effects which the various conditions of loading have on load lines is more difficult to observe at sea. Therefore, a knowledge of the effects of loading or unloading of tanks and holes has on a vessel's stability is most desirable. Stability curves are used to show graphically the levers exerted by a vessel to return itself to a position of equilibrium from the various conditions of heel. The stability information usually provided shows the varying writing levers exerted at the changing conditions of loading and heel. Structural features can result in performance differences between vessels. Example, beam to draft ratio and freeboard. An increase in beam will result in an increase in the writing lever or GZ for all angles of heel. Now, before I finish this video, I want to talk about some of the simple rules that we must observe uh, to follow in stability. All right, so the first rule would be do not overload your vessel with cargo on any one part of the vessel. Now, of course, the diagrams I have shown you here is like a joke. It's like more humorous. It's more um, related to fishing vessels. But I thought I'll just put up some different drawings here, different diagrams here just to break the flow. Don't want to have any commercial vessels here, which I normally use. All right, but the point here is that do not try to load up the vessel on any one singular point. So if you load up the ends of the vessel, uh, that's not good either. Or if you load up the midship of the vessel, that is not good either because then it will result in conditions of hogging and sagging, which will result in the buckling of the ship's plating. Similarly, you should not be, uh, you know, if you have derricks and cranes and uh, heavy derricks and jumbo derricks, uh, when you swing them around, you should be very familiar uh, about the effect it has on the ship's stability, especially if it is loading heavy cargoes and how the center of gravity of the vessel shifts along when you pick up heavy cargoes or cargoes using ship's derricks or crane. I will make a separate video on that and explain to you how the center of gravity shifts um, uh, when you pick up a cargo using the ship's derrick or ship's crane, especially if it's a heavyweight cargo. 
so you must exercise care when lifting heavy weights from high purchase points then we can talk about a little bit about freeing ports now what are freeing ports now to enable the water to run off quickly a vessel should have adequate freeing ports now there are regulations specifying the number and size of these ports and they should be kept clear at all times so that any vessel or any shipping seas or sprays that are on deck are allowed to run freely they are allowed to run off quickly drain out from the vessel on its own now fuel and water tanks should have watertight divisions in them to reduce the free surface effect we've talked about that already but let me just give you some of the other um, uh, suggestions for preserving safe stability on board vessels now all doorways and openings through which water can enter the hull or the deck house or the forecastle should be suitably closed especially in adverse weather or bad weather now accordingly all the appliances for this purpose should be maintained aboard in good and efficient condition in close spaces like deck houses above the weather deck contribute to stability but if their doors or openings are forced open to the sea and water collects inside this it may be slow to drain away now in this case the flooding could become dangerous to the safety of the vessel hatch covers and flush deck scuttles should be kept properly secured when not in use during fish all dead lights should be maintained in good condition and secured closed in bad weather all heavy weights found on ships should be properly stored and should be placed as low as possible gear or any working gear such as derricks cranes ships derricks or ship crane i'm talking about here should be always secured before proceeding to sea freeing ports in bulwarks which are provided with closing appliances should always be capable of functioning and should not be locked especially in bad weather try to keep the partially tanks fill tanks to a minimum at any one time keep the number of partially filled tanks to a minimum all right observe any instructions given regarding the filling of water ballast tanks and remember that slack tanks can be dangerous any closing devices provided for vents to fuel tanks should be secured in bad weather reliance on automatic or fixed steering gear is dangerous as this prevents speedy maneuvering which may be needed in bad weather be alert to all the dangers of following or quartering seas because they cause heavy rolling or difficult steering now if both excessive heeling and yawing occurs reduce the speed or alter course or do both maintain a seaworthy freeboard in all conditions of loading remember that this has a very marked effect on the vessel's maximum righting and recovery powers and the range of heeling angles over which the ability of recovery depends pay special attention to the formation of any ice aboard the vessel and reduce it by all possible means standing wire rigging will ice up to a greater extent than struts or yards if icing cannot be controlled leave the area with all possible speed along or long before it becomes a serious menace so thank you for watching steering my news guys let me know what you thought about this video uh, whether it was helpful or not whether i should continue making these kind of videos which will help with your basic understanding and knowledge of ship stability terms i'll see you soon with my next video thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the channel bye for now